Today we're going to take a look at finding the part of a number. So up here in the key ideas, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to write the percent as a fraction, then multiply by the whole. The percent times the whole equals the part. So again, you'll write the percent as a fraction, then multiply by the whole, the percent times the whole equals the part. So that's one method, and then we're also going to talk about a second method. So let's start with the multiplication first. So I'm going to take the percent, which is 25%, and I am first going to write that as a fraction. 25% as a fraction is 25 over 100, because percents are always out of 100. I'm going to simplify that fraction, which is 1 fourth. So I'm making an equivalent fraction by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 25. Next, I'm going to take that fraction 1 fourth and I'm going to multiply it by the whole. So it says of 40. Think of this as like being out of 40, which helps you find the whole. Then I'm going to multiply. I can put 40 over 1. You still want to follow your rules of multiplication and cross-reduce by dividing by the greatest common factor. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 40 divided by 4 is 10. And so you see that 25% of 40 is going to be 10. The second method is using a table. And you can see in the table, I put the part on the numerator and the whole on the denominator. This is always the case even if the part is greater than 100. So what I'm going to do with this first problem is I'm still going to take my percent, which is 25, which is the part, and I write it as a fraction over 100. I'm just putting it in a table, like a ratio table earlier in the chapter. My goal here is that I need to make an equivalent fraction that ultimately has a denominator of 40. And I'm going to put that here kind of in that last part of my chart. Sometimes I can go from 100 to 40 by dividing by a greatest common factor. In this case, I cannot. There is not a whole number that I divide by 100 that will give me 40. So I have to get there in a different way. So I'm going to look at 25 and 100. And again, I could see that I could divide both of these by 5. So I'm going to divide both of them by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5, 100 divided by 5 is 20. I want you to see that we are basically making equivalent fractions so that we get an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 40. Then I can see that if I multiply 20 times 2, I get 40, and I have to do the same thing to the part. 5 times 2 gives me 10. So now here you see that the whole is out of 40, so once again, this shows me that the part is 10. Looking at the next example, 75% of 32 is what number? Again, with the first method, I'm going to take my percent and write it as a fraction out of 100 because percents are always out of 100. The greatest common factor for 20, or 75 and 100 is 25. So then I'm going to simplify that 75 divided by 25 is 3, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. You could think of this like 75 cents, and 25 is a quarter. And so if you put three quarters together, that gives you 75 cents. Then I'm going to take 3 fourths, and I'm going to multiply it by the whole, which is 32. Again, you can think of this like out of 32. When I say out of something, that out of number is your whole. So I'm going to multiply this by 32, and I can put that over 1. Again, I'm going to cross-reduce by dividing by the greatest common factor. I can divide 4 by 4, which is 1. 32 divided by 4 is 8. I multiply the two numerators together, which is 24. The two denominators is 1. So I know that the part is 24. I'm going to find that same part by using my ratio table. Again, I take 75 over 100, which is my part. 
My goal is to get a denominator of 32. I can look at 32 and know that I cannot divide 100 by a whole number that gives me exactly 32. So that's why I'm going to leave my space here in the middle. With 75 and 100, I'm going to divide by 25. So I'm going to divide each by 25. 75 divided by 25 is 3. Divided by 25 here is 4, just like we did when we simplified it in the first method. Then I can see that 4 times 8 is 32. So to keep it equivalent, I also have to multiply 3 times 8, which is 24. Now you see that the whole is on the denominator. I have 24 as my part, so it matches what I found in the multiplication. The last example is 90% of 20 is what number? 90 over 100. I need to simplify it. Now since these both end in a zero, that tells me that they are both divisible by 10, which is the same as kind of just getting rid of that zero there. So that's 9 tenths. Now I'm going to multiply that by my whole, which is 20. That's 20 over 1. I can cross reduce by dividing by the greatest common factor. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And then when I multiply, I have 18 over 1, so that's just 18. Using the table method, again, I'm going to put 90 over 100. And this example is a little bit different than the first two because if I look at 20 and compare it with 100, I can actually divide 100 by 5 to get 20. So there is a whole number I can divide by, so I don't need that additional ratio in my table for this example. But I do have to divide 90 by 5, and when I do that, I get 18. Again, I have the part of 18 out of the whole 20, which answers my question of 18.